Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Anderson's Garage. Behind me is a 2011 Jeep Compass four-wheel drive with a 2.4 liter and it has a rusted engine cradle. So if you have one of these, prepare to do this job sooner than later. Because the whole underside of the car, as I'm about to show you, is in really good shape. But the engine cradle completely rusted in half. Check it out. I'll show you what's going on here. That's a pretty good vehicle. Like, it's pretty clean inside and out. Pretty well taken care of. Got some nice wheels on it. But here's the problem. Your engine cradle rotted right in half. And actually, it broke on this side. There's the fun stuff right there. Rusted through, which is a dang shame because you can see the rust of the vehicle. I mean, there's a little bit of a scale, but nothing that bad. But this cradle rusted right off. So Alex and I are going to remove this cradle. We have a new one on the way. I'm going to get underneath here. I'll switch to a different camera that I can have underneath here with me. And hopefully walk you guys through this. It doesn't look like it's going to be that bad. Like I looked at it quite a bit and I don't see anything that jumps out as super scary. The transmission has a mount on the driver's side up top. The engine has a mount on the passenger side up top. We should be supporting it across here. And we have a bar to do that. But I don't really see the need if it's if we leave it bolted here we're not gonna be moving the car around also we're doing this without a lift because we still don't have a lift in here so yeah, follow me underneath and we'll get started so the first thing we did on this is remove these two 15 millimeter bolts here go into the core support next we're gonna remove this bolt back here and this transmission bolt I hate Chrysler stuff and here I am working on one Oh, it's an 18. I hate everything Chrysler, except like Trackhawks and Hellcats and stuff, obviously. So what we're gonna do is slowly remove this and see if we get downward movement on the transmission because of this front mount. A lot of rust. Nope, we're good, no movement on the trans. So Alex, I'm gonna need probably a 15, some spray and a 15 wrench and i'm sorry it's a, that's the wrong size yeah it's so bigger it's a 16 it turns out another good reason to put a lift in here at some point is alex could actually be under here with me because he's good enough at it it's not bad it's just there's only enough room for one guy rolling around underneath here so we got to use him to fetch tools hopefully you guys can see okay so that's out. We better shift gears to, there's this heat shield that I have to take off because I have to access the mount that holds the steering rack on. So Alex, we're probably gonna need a ratcheting uh, 10 millimeter wrench. I know it's hard for you guys to see, but the bolts are right there that hold it on. And we have to remove that. So I didn't really, I mean, we've dropped plenty of cradles and I didn't really look on YouTube much there's one guy in there, but he doesn't really show how to do it or what he did. He just talked about it some. So I'm gonna try and show you guys, you Jeep owners, what this is like. And for everybody else watching, it's a Jeep thing and you wouldn't understand. I dang sure don't understand. I don't know how they'd manufacture a vehicle that this main component of it would rust out in such a short amount of time. If the whole rest of it was all scaly and rusted, I get it, but this is ridiculous for only being 12 years old or whatever. And I, I like to avoid Chrysler stuff, like the plague. You got a Chrysler? Well, I'm sorry to hear that. You got a broken Chrysler? Good luck. There must be one more bolt up here. So that's our heat shield right there. I'm gonna try and get this bolt out here for the rack and pinion. This is that heat shield I just removed. In true Chrysler fashion, you've got two 10 millimeter bolts here. And then this one on the side was a 13 that I was able to get out with a stubby wrench. And once again, Without a lift, my hand's gonna be right in here. You guys won't be able to see anything. But I'm gonna tackle this bolt and get that out. And then we're probably gonna shift gears to the sway bar. Those bolts, you can see. Then we'll check back in with you. So I'll show you that once we get them out. All right, so we're working on that 17 millimeter bolt right there, sticking up out of the steering rack. And that thing was so darn tight and so rusted coming out of there that I fooled around for a while and you can only get a wrench on it because of how close the exhaust is. So then I wound up cutting a door into the old cradle here, as you can see. And I use the oxyacetylene torch to heat that right there where the nuts inside of it. I heated that and then it spun right out with no problem. Okay, we have another one up there. We've got to get, we better go ahead and remove this transmission mount. So that's this electrical plug. And it looks like we've got a bolt up there we're gonna have to get out. We need to get that out because we have another one of those bolts that I just farted around with forever behind this. So we're gonna try to remove this. 
we should be able to get a ratchet in here on these two and maybe we can loosen that up just enough to spin it up out of the way and again it's really difficult for me to do with the camera in here so i'll tackle this and i'll check back in with you and let you know how it was okay guys so what we're dealing with is the other rack bolt is behind this motor mount so the two bolts here here and there for this motor mount those broke off that's no big deal because we got a new cradle coming we did remove that bolt up there that goes through the dog bone then we jacked up the front of the transmission towards the front of the car now after that there's that front one right there you can see the socket on it so i was able to with the transmission jacked up i was able to get the socket on it from down here and then fish a long extension through up top and we were able to get it loose so i guess that's the trick to that and i probably could use the old ac delco to get this thing out but that's the only way guys that i could figure out how to get to that one dude said to use a ratcheting wrench from the bottom after jacking up the transmission but that didn't work for me this was the only scenario okay yeah so we got the bolt the bolt is worked up now let's see yeah there we go we're good so we're, I'm gonna pull that extension up through there. We'll probably lose the socket and the bolt in the process, but we'll be able to fish it out. So that's what it took to get this front motor mount bolt out. And we needed that to be able to access the other rack bolt. All right, everyone, we've got the other rack bolt out and I kind of halfway bailing wired it to the exhaust and uh, above. The rack and pinion bolts are gonna give you the most headache. And if you can see in there, so this tube right here that runs up to the top, you can see where I've heated it. There was no other way but to cut this hole in it and heat that. You can see this one better on the other end of the rack. And I had to heat it with the oxyacetylene torch to get that to spin out. Those are the two bolts that hold the steering rack. We've got the ball joint pickled, that's pulled apart. That was really rusted too, for what it's worth. I cut the sway bar and links off. They're pretty well trash anyway. Alex and I are gonna try to pull this cradle out and leave the sway bar for now bolted to the cradle. We're replacing the control arms too, so we're taking the whole thing out as a unit. So we're gonna try to lower this and roll this sway bar upside down slowly as it comes down because I would much rather deal with those rusty bolts out on the floor as opposed to in the vehicle. So right now we just have to pickle the other ball joint. Alex already has the pinch bolt removed. So we're gonna go over there, we're gonna hammer that out. And then we just have the four cradle bolts and we should be able to lower it down. While I'm in the middle of this, I wanted to take a minute to say, make sure and let the people on YouTube know, the creators on YouTube, how much you appreciate their content. It takes an incredible amount of work to film stuff like this and then edit it and then put it out versus just doing the job. It's so much simpler. Uh, you can swear, you can do whatever you want while it's going on. It's a lot slower process to film it and put it out there for you guys. So I'm not saying myself, but people that you watch and enjoy, make sure you let them know in the comments, like and subscribe. It helps them out and gives them motivation to put out more content that you guys enjoy. Now, I wouldn't recommend this if you're gonna save your If you're gonna save your ball joints and control arms, that's not the way to do it, but we're not. All right, so we're ready. We'll get Alex set up on the jack. Now I've heard sometimes the bolts break off or the nuts inside the body spin. We'll give this one a shot and see here. Yeah, we're good. There's one. Okay, so you can see we've got Alex man on the jack in the middle of the cradle. Now we'll do the other cradle bolt. The worst part of this job so far has been just the mess, the rust. Whoa, that one's full of water. Okay, now we need the super long extension. So for this bolt, we come up through here. Okay, that one's out. Now we gotta go do the other side. And those were uh, 21 millimeter, the cradle bolts. All right, Alex, so you slowly, slowly lower your jack and we'll see if this, if everything is gonna clear. So I'm going to try to hold the camera and I'm going to work my pry bar. Okay, so we're loose. So let me go do the other side. There was only those two bolts in the rack. So, all right, lower your jack. Oh, shit. What, what? Stop. I just realized something. What's up? Um, I forgot the, uh, the hoses. <laughs> There's a bracket with a 10 millimeter I can see right here for the hose. You guys learned from my mistake. There's a bracket right in there. 
for the uh, power steering hoses that's still mounted to the cradle. So I'm gonna run these two back bolts in and tighten it up so Alex can move his jack. It'll be easier for me to get in there and remove that bolt and then we'll pick back up. Alex is gonna slowly lower the jack now and when we get to a point where the sway bar is touching the steering rack, I'll have him stop. Okay, stop Alex. Now I'm gonna try and rotate this sway bar up some more. All right, go ahead Alex. You're doing good. I know it's leaning towards me here. I'll take some weight off it. If that makes you feel any better. Well, hey, it, it kind of looks like there might be something hooked up still on this side. No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. There we go. You were right. It was this way bar. So there we go, guys. We'll get it out of here, and I'll uh, flip it upside down and show you the carnage. Alex is going to drag it back, and I'm going to help him. All right. The moment everybody's been waiting for, including Alex. So that's it. 2011 compass and that thing rotted right through and broke while the lady was driving so this is what i was talking about i cut this door in it so i could heat that because this is where your rack bolts up and that those two would not come loose the only way i could do it was to cut these windows and heat it inside there with the oxyacetylene and get that thing just cherry red and then turn them out but yeah, that's it. That's how we did it. We left everything here hooked up. We left our axles in, the whole nine yards. I cut the end links off because we're gonna replace them anyway. And like I said before, flip this thing back over. I didn't want to fight these in the car and I really didn't feel like fighting these with it on the car. So I just cut them off and then it'll be easier to take it apart. So we have new Moog bushings coming, a new cradle, and new control arms with ball joints. So. Look at how bad that was. She's lucky they didn't tear the wheel right off it. Alex and I were able to load it on the trailer, and it drove on the trailer, but it was pretty sketchy. This wheel kept coming this way. When we were doing this, I saw this boot was tore for the ball joint, and I'm like, rather than fight these bolts and stuff, like, let's just get in the in bushings probably worn out and stuff like let's just get new control arms we called the dealer and they wanted they, it was like three to five thousand dollars for this job which i think is kind of crazy they wanted nine hundred dollars for the cradle and i bet it's the same company in china that's making them for dodge as what they are selling them on amazon and if the crummy dodge one lasted 12 years and we can get 10 years out of an amazon one for a hundred dollars like we're gonna give it a shot but that's it you can do it on the floor and we didn't brace the motor like there's a motor mount here on this side and there's a transmission mount on that side i couldn't really see the point in adding an, a brace and trying to figure out somewhere to fasten it like it's already fastened the vehicle's not gonna move and yeah here we are this is that front motor mount bolt that the one that's a bear to get to so we jacked up the front side of the transmission we were able to, to lift it and kind of roll it just a little bit and i tried a ratcheting wrench but it would not fit in there maybe the brand of wrench i don't know so what i wound up doing was once the transmission was rolled and raised up i was able to down through here with a long extension and a 16 millimeter and spin it out that way so there's no special tools needed really i mean we did most of it with the half inch impact a little bit of three eighths impact various uh 15 16 17 18 millimeter wrench it seems like chrysler just pours out a bucket of bolts when they're designing something and like use up all these leftovers because everything is a different size it's so dumb some other guy on youtube's got a video about this and he says like don't attempt it if you don't have a lift well i mean you just watched us do it i don't know what the big deal is it's just like any other cradle the only headache is that it's a chrysler and there's like five different size bolts everywhere and it's really really rusted so but it's no different than any other cradle like we just pulled a cradle out of a 2009 impala and also a 2006 honda civic it wasn't any more difficult than that other than the rust that one stupid front bolt though on that motor mount that's dumb but if you work at it you can get it and if you have a torch get ready to use it to heat up those rack and pinion bolts from the inside heat up the uh, housing you can see we left the motor mount in there and we left the rack and it's still hooked to the knuckle struts are still in with the new cradle control arms sway bar bushings sway bar end links was like 232 dollars we're a few hours into it but it's definitely not the worst thing i've ever done i would definitely do it again if it came to it i won't own one of these things so i won't probably have to unless somebody calls if you drive a chrysler other than like an old you know super b or charger challenger or something or a hellcat or demon something cool any other chrysler product then you must have been dropped on your head 
especially if you're working on it yourself. So I hope that this video helped you guys out and Alex and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.